Welcome back traders. Uh, we have uh, Rob Mitchell again. My name is Vadim. Uh, we're going to go uh, over some uh, important topics today as well. I hope you've been watching our videos. And uh, today we're going to start off by, uh, we got one question from one of our viewers and a long time member, I believe. Uh, and the question goes as follows to Rob. Um, he's saying that uh, he just listened to your NLP segment from the previous video and uh, he's very interested. He's saying that I'm a long time trader. I do very well trading crude oil for periods. Then get off track for a little and get frustrated and then I get back on track just like the example you gave. I would like to eliminate these lapses. I agree I must have limiting beliefs or program running that sabotages me from time to time. I would like to root it out. I was in your oil trading room, but this was not for me. I love my method and it works very well. I would be interested to know if what you would recommend for NLP to root this out. You said it is very quick to correct. Or do you do that? And if so, uh, give me you know, more information about that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm so uh, glad this question was asked. This issue plagues so many traders. So many traders. Now, this particular trader um, I've known for many years. And he is a great trader. He's a great trader. He, um, he you know, he'll, he'll send me, you know, he'll send me spreadsheets of his, uh, of his account. And I mean, Mm -hmm. He he knocks some some out of the park. He's really really good, and so um, I'm glad to have been part of uh, his development as a trader. But but this uh, particular uh, situation for a lot a lot of uh, traders get into this uh, kind of thing. Um, and I think on the first video series we did, I alluded to a, a case that happened. But this one was very cause and effect. I s talked about an order that um, I got stuck in the trade and I couldn't get out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was up like $2,500 $2, on the trade and the market quickly reversed and I couldn't get out. My software oh, was yeah. frozen. TF. Yeah, and I, uh -huh. I got, yeah, I ended up getting bit for uh, like $2,500 uh, on the trade. And um, what happened was I went into major tilt mode mm -hmm. for like a week. I was trading 15 lots that day and I had to back it down and kind of like restart, you know, mm -hmm. is is the way I handle it. But but uh, this kind of thing happens with uh, with traders all the time, and um, we can usually uh, root that out. Typically, uh, what it is, it's I, I call it alignment. Your uh, your conscious mind is not in alignment with your belief system, and so we work with the beliefs and we work with the limiting decisions that prevent. Uh, the beliefs that you believe that you are desiring um, from manifesting, and um, and so uh, when you go in and clear the limiting decision associated with the um, associated with the uh, belief that is uh, essentially sabotaging the trader's efforts. Now, what happens is you know a trader operates just fine for a period of time, and then. Uh, something happens uh, within uh, the trader's life that uh, it acts as a trigger. So there's some environmental trigger of sorts, uh, which would be really difficult to figure out what that is, but it doesn't really matter. You get in and you find the limiting decision, you clear it, and then the, the, uh, the individual can work in alignment. Now, um, there's a couple of different alignments um, Really, this is kind of interesting. I'll just kind of throw it in on the side. You have alignment between your conscious and your unconscious mind. And um, and then you have alignment between... Um, you have alignment between your mind and your heart. Now, I think you showed me the other day, you have one of those meters. I, uh, I forget what they're called. It's kind of cool. Um, uh, but you can hook up this meter and it'll show you whether or not you're your heart is going in rhythm with your uh, breathing, and I I forget what they uh, what they call that what what it says on that meter, but 
Um, I apologize, I don't remember what that is right offhand, but but basically uh, during those moments that you're in alignment, uh, you feel a great sense of gratitude. Coherence. Coherence, yeah. What's the name of that meter? It's um, uh, heart math. Yeah, heart math. It's kind of cool. Now, I learned about that from a doctor, uh, a friend of mine, another really, really great trader, mm -hmm. um, uh, came down with uh, prostate cancer. And so he started doing a lot of research on what causes that kind of thing to happen. And he found this uh, author, wrote a book called Anti-Cancer. And I found his video uh, through the, um, it, it's a, vi a video that was created by the Detroit uh, Public uh, Television System. Mm -hmm. So it's Anti-Cancer, Detroit Public Television, wonderful lecture on diet and, uh, and these, these sorts of things. But but what I found uh, there, he took this meter and he, he did a, uh, he, he hooked it up to this lady and he showed her coming into alignment with herself and how the, the uh, heart and the, everything just came into balance. It's a beautiful mm. thing. Mm. And he said that's associated with a state of gratitude. Well, when you're in a state of gratitude, um, you're in a position to receive, really, mm. because you're not being judgmental or you're not... Now, I also teach um, in my uh, oil room, or uh, sometimes I'll teach it in the webinars, how to do uh, the learning state. Let me take a minute on that and teach you the learning state. The learning state's really great. Now, if you teach this to a kid and have them do it when they go into the classroom, the grade point average will go up. I mean a lot, like one to one and a half grade points. we got like 20 years of data on this, but mm -hmm. it's very simple. All you do is just look up, find a spot on the wall. Your eyes going up, right? Mm -hmm. Find a spot on the wall. Don't strain your eyes. Just send them up there and just find that spot on the wall and just stay there. Just fixate on it for a moment. Now, you'll notice when you do this, most of the time when we're doing things, our, our, uh, our focus becomes very narrow, very, very narrow. Mm -hmm. But when you do this, you'll notice if you hold your hand up on the sides of your head, you'll notice that you've got a full 180 degrees or even more view. I can see my fingers way out here, and they're way back on this behind the sides of my eyes. I can still see my fingers moving back there, see? Mm -hmm. And so uh, what happens is you go from what's called foveal vision, very narrow, narrow vision, narrow focus, uh, narrow-minded, to big, wide, peripheral, open vision, open-minded, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in this state, in this learning state, you can't be in a bad mood. Hmm. So you do that with your eyes for a minute, and then you just bring them down. If it's a kid, you just tell them to bring the eyes down, put them on the teacher. What happens is the, the whole mind is just open. Everything's open. You know, man, hmm. I see every, I'm, I got six monitors here, man. I'm seeing it all, baby, right? <laughs> well, that uh, mental disposition of openness is, is, a, is a state of receptivity. Mm-hmm. And if you're breathing uh, in sync with your heart, then that brings you into alignment, too. And what happens is you just feel very euphoric and really, really good. And mm -hmm. you're open-minded and you can learn. And so, like, if you're attending this webinar, uh, this interview with us today, I strongly urge you, get yourself in the learning state. Put your eyes up. It only takes a few seconds, 10, 15 seconds. The more you do it, the more you learn to do it. I'll tell you, if you spend your day doing that, mm -hmm. you're going to have a wonderful life. You can't be in a negative state. You can't be self-demeaning when you're uh, when you're in that state. And so it's just a, a really simple trick for just bypassing all the garbage that a lot of traders put on themselves. And so I teach people the learning state, like in our oil trading room. And um, and how about like that. looking up and smiling too? Yeah. Uh, another thing you can do is you can focus your energy back up above the top of your head in the back. Mm. Okay. And so what this does, uh, from like a, a brainwave standpoint, it puts you towards a theta state. Hmm. It's called a theta state. Hmm. Now, this is an interesting thing uh, that I'll just throw on the side with that. Uh, kids, for example. Um, a kid, um, you know, like a four-year-old, is learning in excess of, of 50 or even upwards of 100 new words per day. Hmm. So... That's pretty amazing, right? I mean, can any of us as adults even begin? I mean, you know, if you were studying a foreign language mm -hmm. and you, you know, if you could learn 10 new words a day, it would be pretty remarkable, right? Yeah. 
Uh, kids learn 50 to 100 new words a day. Well, how's he doing that? Well, he's, he's way down here, three and a half feet off the ground, looking up at everything. Mm -hmm. So what happens? He's in, he's in theta all the time. He's in a receptive state automatically because he's only mm. three and a half feet tall. Mm, I love it. You know, the whole world changes if you start living down there, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so, anyways, take that learning state and use it. It's just, you know, if, if that's all you got out of today's interview, believe me, you've done it. You achieved a lot. But uh, but then bring the breathing in alignment with your heart rate. Oh boy, man, you're just like wow, <laughs> having a good day, man. Yeah, see, this helps trading for sure. It does. And and see, the thing is, how you feel right now, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. I got this uh, light going across yeah. my uh, face. Let me clean that up a little bit. Let's see if that takes care of it. No. Beautiful sunny day outside. Okay. So uh, how you feel right now is a choice. All right. If you're feeling down in the dumps, I mean... Go watch some, com you know, go watch some stand-up comedy for a few minutes or something, man. You'll just like, you know, change your whole state. But mm -hmm. you know, when with the NLP techniques that we teach people, you teach her a resource state. You teach people how to be in control of their state right now, so you have a lousy day. We'll do the learning state and bring your breathing in line. You, it's going to be tough to be in a lousy mood if you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. a, totally, a, a, if not impossible. So, right. uh, your state's your choice, mm -hmm. and so um, you so have a lousy day. Mm, it's your choice. Uh, for uh, Ron, uh, if you wanted to contact you, what's the best email? Oh, uh, any of them. Uh, support at oiltradingroom.com or okay. indicatorsmart.com. Sounds easy. good. Remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Let's talk about um, reversing profitable trade versus reversing uh, losing trade. The psychology there. Uh, with or, I mean, I'm presuming there's a signal associated with that. Right? Uh, discretionary, you know. Okay. Well, for example, I don't know what's going to happen. I have a position on the bonds today. Mm -hmm. uh, if I get a signal, it's probably going to, you know, more often than not, it's a signal to reverse, right? Mm-hmm. Now, um, when that uh, signal, whether that signal is, so let me tell you a little bit, uh, the bond model, how that works. Um, every day it generates a new signal that's looking 24 hours in the future. Mm -hmm. On a Friday it's actually looking to Monday, but you get what I'm saying. We're talking crystal ball now, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so so um, if the system reverses, it it actually doesn't matter to me if it's profitable or not. Okay, like we talked in the uh, previous interview, I use a I use a thousand dollar stop on that. Why do I use a thousand dollar stop? Because I don't want it to get hit. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want it to get hit. I'd you know make it bigger, but right. you know. It is what it is. So, um, so the uh, it doesn't actually matter because the prediction is 24 hours out, whether that's profitable or not. So, like obviously, if I'm still in the market, my stock didn't get hit. I could be down 600 bucks and the thing reverses. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and so uh, so it doesn't it doesn't really uh, matter in that particular case. Now, in an intraday time frame. If you get into a morning situation where the market's really choppy mm -hmm. and you uh, have a trade that's losing and getting stopped, no. let's say, let's say, like right in there. Mm hmm. That's a that's a day trader nightmare right there. Mm -hmm. That's a day trader nightmare. So uh, what could happen is <clears throat> if you are day trading, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're trading intraday on that chart right there, and the market's doing that, 
uh, um, and basically what this is uh, looking at is um, uh, the brick of this bar is uh, eight ticks, mm -hmm. so it's a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and that's fifty, mm -hmm. and so that's another fifty. Mm -hmm. So this range from here to here is two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now most guys trying to trade with really small stops, right? We talked about that on another interview, so I won't recover that. Guys trading with really small stops. If you're trading on like a, you know, four to eight tick stop in there or something like that, uh, you could get chopped three, four times and find yourself down several hundred dollars mm -hmm. and then spend the rest of your day trying to recover it. Well, the market went nowhere. Now, in a situation like that, reversing is absolutely hazardous. Mm -hmm. So the answer to your question rests in whether or not there's a system and what's happening with the trend trend and then I'll also add what's happening with the range expansion now what do I know for the uh, for the ES market we covered this I think last week possibly just understanding ranges in the in the ES market okay so the first period of the day the first period of the day a period first mm -hmm. 30 minutes I'm expecting about uh, 10 handle move mm -hmm. a 10 handle move so where's it go 1914 down just past 04 mm -hmm. so <clears throat> so excuse me for that first 30 minute period I got my expected range expansion mm -hmm. like right on the money yeah now stock indexes are like right on the money for mm -hmm. uh, for range expansion numbers I think mm -hmm. I might have showed you uh, this table let me see if I can pull it up uh, this is just crazy I don't know if I have it and I don't want to go searching oh here I have it right here yeah we'd, we'd pulled this up in a prior yeah two videos ago I think yeah yeah probably yeah, look, look at these numbers in the stock indexes you know first 30 minutes 10 on the A period. See, I, I just know that stuff right off the top of my head. Uh, mm -hmm. B is 8, C is 7.75, starts rolling off after that. So, you know, if you're going to make good money intraday in the in the stock indexes, you're probably going to make it in those first three periods or you're going to be trading out for larger range expansion. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, the average... Uh, range today's range in the ES uh, 24.75 mm -hmm. 24.75 so the a period alone is 40 percent of the whole day's range yes right so mm -hmm. um, so if you're gonna go for that uh, 24 handle expansion and you weren't in that extension in the a period then you're gonna look for uh, some kind of a retracement uh, situation to sell again and hope for the range expansion. Mm -hmm. the, the thing with intraday trading is you don't know when, you know that's probably going to happen. Mm -hmm. You don't know when it's going to happen. So you have to manage for, um, you're managing for getting caught in the, see, because when this comes back up into the range, it's like, like a 618 retracement or something. Mm -hmm. Um, just eyeballing it, right? Uh, you know, by the time it comes back up six handles, uh, there's a 24 handle range. That means there's 18 left if I'm up in here someplace, right? Mm -hmm. 18 left. And so uh, you try and uh, keep stabbing for that uh, range expansion. So, you know, you might sell this and get caught in it and give some back. You might sell that. You might sell that. Each one just like scratching, scratching. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and then and then you hit this one. There's probably going to be the big kahuna there. I didn't trade the ES today. Yeah, there's there's a semi big trade right there, right? Mm -hmm. Twelve points. But so. but the idea is that you're uh, you're trading um, below the midpoint of the day, and mm -hmm. so the tendency is down. Mm -hmm. And and if you have the patience and the intestinal fortitude, then you're playing for you know about twenty four handles less whatever it's already done mm -hmm. simple right mm -hmm. now you may actually be scalping inside of that but if you don't understand that structure 
uh, you're probably in trouble. Now, and, and when I say structure, I mean the, ma- the math of it. Mm-hmm. How much has been used? How much is remaining? What's the probability for what's remaining? Mm-hmm. If you don't know those things and you're trading, I urge you to reflect strongly on the limiting decision that you've given yourself to trade without having a clue what, what's going on. Right? Mm. You know, I mean, I'm not making fun or anything. I mean, we've all mm. traded where we didn't know what was going on, but um, the uh, you have to be careful about these kinds of things because these markets are utterly consistent mm. with this stuff. They're utterly consistent with it, so it's a huge edge. Mm-hmm. But but uh, but the uh, so if you're reversing. It needs to be, you know, back to your original question. If you're reversing it, it, it needs to be in alignment with some signal or, you know, what the market's trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but just reversing intraday, day trading, and you don't know where you are in the big picture and all that kind of stuff, you're probably going to really get torn to shreds. Yeah, because, uh, you know, if you're reversing a losing position, uh you can easily lose again on the reverse. Well, and you're probably doing it at a disadvantage because uh, markets, especially like the ES, it's not a range expansion market. It gets its range expansion done, Mm -hmm. but it does it in a way that uh, is challenging. Mm -hmm. And so you have to to be able to hold through. Mm -hmm. You know, the question is, you know, how often, this is a really good question for a trader to ask, how often? Let's say I sell right there. That's mm-hmm. a good little sell point. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a type two, you know, pattern. I think we talked about those in one of the interviews. Nice little type two pattern right there. You sell right there. Well, you get up a hundred bucks on the trade. And what does it do? It comes all the way back into your entry and then negative fifty dollars before it goes down all the way down here, mm-hmm. and then down here, and then you know, and then down here, right? Mm-hmm. So, the, here's the question. If I risked, say, two hundred dollars to get in right there, mm-hmm. and I went up a hundred, is it worth it to me to sit through this and go for the big trade when this one only goes fifty bucks against me? So I risked uh, two hundred, which this is the stop didn't get hit, so, which it makes it really irrelevant in the big picture. So mm-hmm. I sell right here. Goes 100 in my favor. I don't move the stop. It's like 200 bucks up there. Okay, mm-hmm. or actually, I'm sorry, it's 100. Okay, it's 100 bucks up there. Maybe a little bit with the tail up. There. I might have chosen to place it up here. It's like 120. Yeah, 115. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 125, 137, 50, something like this. Okay, and then it comes down. I'm up 100. Oh, whoa, well, whoa, well, whoa! Well, I got 100 dollars. You know? Okay, um, you know, whatever. So you take it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, then you got to re-enter. Well, where'd you re-enter? Um, you know, five ticks below the original entry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And you risked how much? You know, okay, you risked another 125, 137, 50, whatever. Okay, fine. Okay, comes down. Now, the problem is that you're probably going to get out of this trade because that bar comes all the way back to break even. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, you know, so what I ask a lot of traders like in the room, you know, say, hey, what is the probability without just the mechanics of, of of the market and the mechanics of the bars and everything else, without any other edge, what's the probability of a trade going in your favor by a, a decent amount and coming all the way back to your entry and then some before it turns into a really big trade? It's got to be a high number. Yeah, and, and, and the question is, right, because that darn things you know you're not that far off of the open right there mm-hmm. you know or you know i just picked that point you're not that far off of you know off of the half back the midpoint or whatever you know what are you like there's the midpoint right there so the yellow one mm-hmm. so you know the question is um how um how are you going to manage that you know am i going to am i going to hold out you know, a lot of really good systems, you know, like the bond system. We're talking about the, our bond system a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this thing, I don't even, I don't even look at the, um, I don't even look at the, 
um, the darn thing, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, I know it's it's uh, it's moving away, and um, and so the idea, um, the idea is to uh, let it run, you yes. know, but I mean, this trade right here where I got in it. You know, the the broker sent a note over me. It's like, boy, I see. You know, it's like really. Hmm. Um, where did I originally get in this thing? It's been uh, a while. No, no, check this out, dude. I think I got in like on the twenty first. Oh, uh, the, the entry is yeah. all the way over here. Okay. Uh huh. Entry is all the way over here. So I buy this. It goes against me by you know uh, like eight hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. And then it comes up here, and then it goes up profitable like a thousand dollars, and then it comes back down to like you know three hundred dollars at this low. Mm-hmm. So up, I, I'm up a thousand. It comes down to three hundred. Well, what do I know? I know it's going higher. Mm-hmm. I know it's going higher, and it comes higher. Then it comes back. This is like FOMC, right? It comes all the way back down to my entry. Oh, it's up a thousand bucks. What you know? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Oh man, you know. So you can't think about the money. Mm-hmm. I know that this model is saying money's flowing into bonds. Mm-hmm. Money's flowing into bonds. So, and it does all this choppy stuff, and then boy, it starts to take off, and then it comes back a little, and then boom. Mm-hmm. Right? right? This is exactly what I'm talking about. You got mm-hmm. the staying power for what you know is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that's a really good uh, topic. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, reversing, know what the context is, and um, and often when you're reversing, uh, so let's go over the mechanic of that a little bit. Let's say I bought this here or something, mm-hmm. and it goes up, and I reverse. Well, in that particular case, it looks pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. But what if I um, what if I bought here, and uh, I reverse? Uh, you know, like down in here or something. Mm-hmm. Then I'm really trapped. Yep. I'm trapped. I'm I'm really on the, uh, entirely on the wrong side. And a lot of what we talk about, um, and what I teach has to do with, because uh, the market is designed to trap. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not designed to trap. It's it's a market. But but what I mean is the places where traders get trapped are are the types of situations that fuel orders that fuel market movement Mm -hmm. and so I'll give you an example of that this just goes on all day Um, this just goes on all day you know the the market comes down like this and you get these little reversal bars right here I'll draw a little line right there and then it comes up well what happens is a bunch of guys get long right here Mm -hmm. well what happens to them they get stopped out Mm -hmm. then what happens that goes down below here all these guys get short down here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, man, I'm going to get caught in the biggest trade of the century. Well, what's mm-hmm. it do? It'll stop them all out. Mm-hmm. What's it do? It comes up here. You know, it do, you, you don't even get the break, right? Well, there you do. One tick break. Mm-hmm. And then they hit it. Mm-hmm. They hit it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, know, you, you break out of there. Bam. They stop them all out. You know, what's this to come down? Take it out by one tick. It's, this is a D, 30-minute low. Takes it out by, like, one tick, right? Mm-hmm. What does it do? They hit it, you know, stop them all out, right? All the way back up here again above this high, right? Oh, you know, what's it do? Uh, stop them all out, right? This, the market does this all day long. Mm-hmm. The whole thing's about, about because uh, markets, you know, never forget this phrase. Why does the market go up? To find sellers. Why does the market go down? To find buyers. Mm-hmm. So it comes up here, you know, comes up here, guy buys up here. Well, what's the market doing up here? It's looking for sellers, not buyers. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, you got to get on the on the right side of that equation. That's why I teach like this. You know, we call this the trap trader oscillator. We look at um, these uh, traps. You see, see, this is way up high over here. And I call this the trap trader oscillator. It's way up high over here. I'm looking for a selling action up in here. Now, you might sell that and get trapped, and then you got to re-enter a short. But you know that the next big move is down right there. You know that the next big move uh, is up right here. Now you could look at that and say, "Well, I can see that in the price action," but you really can't. You know, mm-hmm. 
And so it's nice to have something that you can look at that kind of reveals those things to you. Anyways, that that flip-flop alternation is what markets do all day. Mm -hmm. And that's why 95% of traders lose because they're doing exactly the opposite of what they need to do to be successful. Mm -hmm. Now add that on to the psychological things that we're talking about, and you can see how a trader can get into a trap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one more thing about that, though. Until our next, you know, we're going to go on to our next question here. But, but check this out. Ask yourself. I mean, if you're interested in personal development and making yourself better at all, and you probably, if you're uh, watching this interview, you are. You want to be a better person. You want to make yourself a better person. Trading is an amazing way to do that. Hmm. It's an amazing way to do that because you're, because you could actually be the most screwed up person and never have any feedback from your environment about how screwed up you are. But in trading, that thing tells you right away if you're mm -hmm. if you're doing it wrong, and so you have to um, you have to take full personal. We talked about personal responsibility. You take full personal responsibility for the result that you're getting, and you ask, "What is it within me that's causing me to get this result? What is it within me that is bringing this result to my world? Mm -hmm. And what do I need to do in order to?" Um, make that result what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful kind of, you know, um, context for uh, for personal development and learning to manifest, whether it be manifesting relationships or good family or uh, money and career and uh, health, manifesting anything in your life. And so mm -hmm. it's really wonderful from that viewpoint. So. Yes, I agree. Uh, so what is, um, speaking of, um, um, you know, why markets move up and down, what is the difference then between uh, markets being driven by fear and greed versus the market auction? Well, see, that's the exact point. Okay, we're talking about the learning state being in alignment with your unconscious mind and your heart and your, and your conscious mind and... I didn't bring in the third one of being in alignment with divinity. That's a whole whole other animal. But in alignment, at whatever level that you're operating at, is fine. Okay. Um, and so, if you are acting like a human, without regard to anything else, just what your uh, your emotions tell you to do, mm -hmm. they will naturally gravitor, gravitate towards, you know, buying here, mm -hmm. selling here, mm -hmm. buying here, selling here, buying here, selling here, because mm -hmm. that's what you're seeing on the chart. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we talked about, you know, you know, somebody might be out there saying, oh, Rob, that's a bunch of bunk. Well, actually, it's not, and I'm going to tell you why. What did we talk about uh, either last week or the week before? I don't remember on the interview. Um, do markets rally on high volume or do they rally on low volume? On low volume. Markets, yeah, markets move. I should have said move. Yeah. Markets move on low volume. Why? Because somebody shorted here who's thinking like the herd and they couldn't stand it and so they got out at 50 bucks. And then the, this guy got out at 100, and this guy got out at 150, and this guy got out at 200. This guy got out, got out, got out. Well, by the time you get down here, uh, there's nobody in the market. Mm -hmm. That's why I can come back up fast like that. This mm -hmm. cre created a liquidity vacuum. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there are no more sellers, and so the market has to go up uh, looking for more sellers again, right? Mm-hmm. We said a minute ago, was well, the market goes up to find sellers and it goes down to find buyers. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the herd is thinking the market goes up to go up. Mm -hmm. and the market mm -hmm. goes down to go down. Mm -hmm. Well, there's orders there. There's a tangible relationship with uh, orders that are happening. So, uh, so anyways, um, the, the non-aligned human is going to make the wrong decision almost every time. You're literally looking on the, when you look at a chart, 
you're looking at collective human behavior. Mm-hmm. They're buying in the wrong place and they're selling in the wrong place. A wonderful book, I don't know if I put it out there, Daniel Kahneman, Thinking Fast and that's Slow. slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, that's that book's a tough one to, to, uh, to read, but uh, that's behavioral uh, economics. Mm-hmm. And it talks about how people consistently make the wrong decision. Mm-hmm. Wonderful book. Yes. I'd read it, even if it takes you three years to do it. You know, read like two pages a day or something. You know, because um, the it, it's it's astounding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's astounding that also. This is another really funny one that uh, Conway put in there. The more of an expert you become, because it kind of starts turning the other way on you. The more of an expert you become, the more you surround yourself by people who are also more narrow-minded. We're going back into foveal vision again. We're not, mm-hmm. you know. I, I'd much rather hang out with a person who's not like in a narrow world and a paradigm where, um, you know, this can happen in the medical profession. You know, there's a bunch of doctors and they hang out with a bunch of doctors and they talk about the same things and they all have certain um, kind of... Um, uh, environment that they operate within and within the hospital, you know, mm-hmm. the office and all these kinds of things. And I'm not picking on doctors by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, you know, that just came to mind. But, but what happens is the, the environment that they're exposing themselves to can get kind of narrow within that. Mm-hmm. Just natural. We're human. That's what, what happens. But, you know, if you're a good old boy who you know, has got friends who do all different kinds of professions. And, you know, if you're Larry the cable guy, right? Mm -hmm. And you know all different kinds of people and all different kinds of professions that do all different kinds of things, you're going to be receiving all different kinds of information flow of all different qualities and interests and everything else. And you're actually maybe more adaptable to things. So um, Kahneman has a chapter in there that shows how people who are certified experts in a field actually have a prediction rate of much less than 50 percent so you know keep that one up in the noggin the next time you're watching the news Mm -hmm. you know with some expert on there you know they're less than 50 percent kahneman said so man i'm going to remember that (laughs) yeah so anyways it's kind of a cool uh concept and a cool book so i recommend that one Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about something we promised to talk about uh, in the last video, uh, and that is uh, risk versus stop. Oh, I thought we covered that. Nope. Um, okay. Uh, well, I kind of alluded to that with the bonds, right? Yeah. Uh, a few minutes ago. Basically, uh, I like to I like to put it this way. Let's say you had a trading system, whatever that might mean. That could be a mechanical system of you know, rules, or it could be a collection of uh, uncorrelated ideas that we've talked about in uh, prior interviews. Okay, let's say you you have uh, something like that. And my favorite system, of course, would be um, 100% winners with zero ticks of adverse movement against you. So what does that mean? It means I sold right there. Mm Mm-hmm. I bought, not right there, I bought right there. Mm -hmm. And I sold right there. It's a system that's 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. With zero ticks of adverse movement. Some might call it adverse excursion or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, if you had a system with that characteristic, um, would you be confident about trading it? even without a stop. Well, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Would you possibly have any psychological issues whatsoever with a system like that? Not likely. No. You just go in there and do it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you did, it'd be kind of goofy, right? Oh, yeah. my system is 100% accurate, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> you, you know, right. Yeah. So, uh, so anyways, um, now, we all know, no systems like that. You know, sometimes you pull the trigger, and you're just going, oh, I didn't think that through just right. Mm-hmm. 
you know, should I hold or should I go now? So, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we all make mistakes. We all get caught in traps. The wrong thing. The market starts just like flipping. Sometimes the order book just like turns over on you just like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you get on the wrong side all the time. So, um, but let's say, uh, let's say uh, you you have a system that runs about 85% winners and the winners are two times the losers. Mm-hmm. You know, well then you, you know you can have a good deal of confidence with a system like that. Is in fact that's an astounding that's system good. from a, from yeah. a gambling system viewpoint. Yeah, that's out insane actually. Um, but but let's say uh, you did that with a 25 tick stop, and it and it didn't even get hit 15 percent of the time because some of your trades were reversals, like I described with the bonds earlier. Really. Thousand dollar mm-hmm. stop. Excuse me, maybe I reverse it a six hundred dollar loss, mm-hmm. and I get a signal going the the other way, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that uh, twenty five tick stop never gets hit, or it gets hit maybe ten percent of the time. So, you know, I ask myself, well, can I reasonably take on losing two hundred and fifty dollars? You know, twenty five tick stop, right? Uh, lo- losing two hundred fifty dollars. Um, 10% of the time, I can probably live with that, you know. But what happens is the trader starts getting sloppy, they start reversing. The next thing you know, the 85% that is their system that they could be executing if they were really following what they know to be true. Um, and the next thing you know, they are batting 60, 50, 40, 30% getting stopped out a lot for big ticket 25 right Mm -hmm. Right, something like that so then what happens is they start getting severe psychological issues rightfully so associated with uh, triggering uh, traits and uh, most of mostly was self-induced so if my method is solid and my stop is big and my stop is a small percentage of you know, ordinary win, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm a, if I am uh, executing intelligently within that framework, then the stop size doesn't really matter that much. Now, what what I'll see a lot of guys do. Let me uh, put that into a, a perspective of what what I see happen all the time. I get the emails all the time. Oh, I'm going to, you know, I lost my job as a, you know, whatever, and I've got $5,000, and, you know, I'm going to open a trading account, and I'm going to support my family. Okay. I bet you I've been doing this for, you know, 20 some odd, 27 years or whatever, and um, I've really done my Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours over several times. Mm-hmm. Um and so um, you get a guy like that, and he says, and I'm going to do it on six tick stops. Yeah. Well, okay, what do I know is going to happen to this guy? 27% winners, and with his average win is $50, and his average loss is 100 Well, what does that mean? It's a net losing system. Mm-hmm. Right? So... Um, so, if you trade too tight, we we talked about this a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, where was it? I forget. Oh, well, it's, you know, say here or whatever. This one, this one's a little nicer. Um, so, you know, you, you you sell right here, and it comes down, and you know, you decide, okay, am I going to hold? Am I going to hold? And so, it comes back up all the way to your entry. Uh, on this bar over here, right? Mm-hmm. Your, here's your if your entry was right there, right? Comes all the way back up. Well, you know, guess what? You were up like two hundred and thirty seven dollars at the peak, maximum favorable excursion. Mm-hmm. Um and so and then eventually it comes up and it really whacks you. Mm-hmm. So um if you uh if you um if you had the direction right like in the oil room, I mean, we've got stats, you know, 83% probable that you're, 
you know, going 85 ticks. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if you know it's 85% in your favor, you've got an 85% winning system. All you got to do is execute it intelligently. Um, so anyways, if you placed a stop that's too tight, um, you're going to get taken out way too often. Mm-hmm. So I, I get into this with, you know, the guy, I, I get the email, this is from somebody who's been trading for a while, and they've been doing, okay, I, uh, Rob, uh, the email reads something like this, um, I keep getting stopped out, and then the trade reverses and turns into a big winner, and I'm sitting there on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the trader will tell me that in the email. Mm-hmm. And um, so he's literally telling me what the solution to his problems. Rob, my stops are too small and I'm too fearful because I've screwed up too much in the past Mm -hmm. and it keeps taking me out of these big 85 tick trades or the 20 or the 18 ticks that you're going to get in the ES if you had sold uh, in here somewhere and held it till the end of the day. Like I said, the bond system trades at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Just holds at the end of the day. You don't even look at it. You turn off the screen. Don't even mm-hmm. look. I don't care. Stops there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't look. It's not going to help you. Right? So in this particular case, though, uh, the trader places the stop too tight. He gets taken out. He re- he repeats and enters again at a worse price. Gets gets taken out on a stop that's too small. He repeats and enters again. And at the end of the day, he took 14 short trades. Mm-hmm. 14 short trades. He had the direction right. He had everything right. The market went 27 handles of range. He started his campaign at six handles off of the open. So there's 18 handles of potential for him, which is, you know, 900 bucks in the ES, right? He took 14 trades, and most of them were losers, and he scalped out with a couple in the end of the day with uh, $50. But if he had just stayed in the position, he'd have 1000 or 900 Right. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the problem with stops too small. And most traders that are doing it know that they're doing it, but they're they're uh, they've gotten themselves into that fear cycle thing. He's, he's began this question mm-hmm. with fear and greed, and you have to let it breathe, but you have to have confidence in your system. And the only way I know if they have confidence in your system is to know what the stats are. Mm-hmm. And that you know, so that's what what I do. That that's what works for me, and that's what I teach. The then uh, the question also becomes, if if you had a wider stop, who is to say that you were going to stick with that winning position? Right. Well, this is where you need to get your thinking right. And the thing is, in the grand scheme, I can teach a system for entering a trade and having some reasonable risk reward. Mm-hmm. But like I was showing in the ES here earlier, I mean, you could stab at that short several times before you before you catch it. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, now the ES is tougher to do that than than other markets. Mm-hmm. That's a choppy little bugger. It yeah. it it gets its range, but it's it got it's a lot gonna, of traps in that one. It's going to emotionally. Uh, you got to, you know. You got to be. Uh, this is why I teach in crude oil. Mm-hmm. Because in in crude oil. Um, the ratio between the retracements and the extensions is a much more manageable number. Some at sometimes uh, four and five to one, mm. versus what's in the ES, yes, like two to two one. Two to one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two to one. So your opportunity in crude oil is possibly two to you know two and a half times the uh, ES, and that's the ES right now. Mm-hmm. It's not normal for the ES to be having. 25 handle days right it's that's yeah. not historically normal right and so uh, and that's another thing that makes trading stock there's a couple of things that makes trading stock stock indexes challenging one is it's very subject to many reports and so you kind of need to be report savvy mm-hmm. but nothing wrong with that mm-hmm. um, nothing wrong with that and um, the other is it's subject to a healthy variance in in uh, ranges at various times. 
-hmm. Now, right now, like I said, uh, A period, 10. You mm -hmm. catch that, man. You know, you catch that on a, a few lots. You know, you're done for the day, baby. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes. Yeah. That's when you have to manage the greed part. Well, uh, what I do, what I do is I would look at what is the... Here's that whole equation. I'm just going to give it to you in a nutshell. And you figure it out. You send me your spreadsheet. We'll talk about it. Okay. Ten handle movement in ES off the open like every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so the question is, how far, at what point in that ten handles do I know that it's going another three you know you know do I know at seven that it's going ten do I know at six that it's going ten do I know at five it's going ten do I, you get what I'm saying mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at what point do I statistically know how much does it have to move before that it's going to continue uh -huh. out to ten this way how uh -huh. how far that's the question well that would be pretty easy to figure out through stats it it's entirely statistical Right. Now this is exactly what we do. I think I mentioned in a in another in another uh, one of these interviews, uh, Nate Silver's book, The Signal and the Noise. Mm -hmm. I have it. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't read that and you're a trader, mm -hmm. you can quote me on this. You crazy? <laughs> okay. That guy predicted the election in all 50 states the last uh, presidential election, and you know how he did it. I was astounded when I read the book because I was like, this is exactly what we do in the world. Mm -hmm. um, now, I have a background in statistics, and he's, t he's teaching Bayesian statistics in there. It's simple stuff, man. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's great. Mm -hmm. So if you're a trader, read that book. Join the oil trading room. See what we're doing in there, man. It'll, it'll, it'll light up. It'll open up for you. So I know you look at uh, uh, ranges uh, of last uh, 10 periods, right? Or five? Uh, like, you know, when I'm quoting you the, um, when I'm quoting, well, I was just taking today's range in the ES, 24.75. That's where I was just grabbing that 24 number. Right. But like the ranges lately in, uh, the median ranges in um, the ES, um, lately are uh, 30 and a half. Mm -hmm. 30 and a half. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I've been predicting the ES for many years. You know that. Mm -hmm. There's a two-day and a three-day cycle in the ES. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a weekly cycle. Well, two, three, two, three, mm -hmm. Get that right? Two, three, five. Mm -hmm. two, two, three, five. And um, and so I take the ranges for the ES. Um, I compute the ranges for five days. So the five day range in the, the five day median range in the ES is thirty point five right now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, do how you... often does it hit that lately? How often does it hit its median range lately? With a huge, um, um, hot, very high number, you know, like in the eighties, nineties. Yeah, yeah, in the uh, in the eighties. Mm -hmm. There's going thirty ticks. There's going thirty handles. Uh, you know, you know, in the eighties. So. Mm -hmm. Um. So, okay, so that's the range you look at. Do you look at VIX? Um, I. Do not. Let me tell you what the VIX is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, by the way, you want a market that can tear you to shreds mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. I think you might be better off doing options on that or something, doing weekly options or something. But, and by the way, um, on the VIX, VIX futures and like VXX ETFs, mm -hmm. if you're going to enter into that world, mm -hmm. um, be careful because those instruments are entirely different. Mm -hmm. They're entirely different. Now, um, let me tell you what 
VIX is. What what Vadim is referring to, guys, is the volatility index. Well, what is a volatility index? It's an annualized standard deviation. So, what does that? Oh, standard deviation. Oh my goodness. Okay, forget all of the fancy stuff. When the VIX says 50, that means, and if the market's trading at 100 and the VIX says 50, it means that um, the market expects, the market expects, or is priced for, or, you know, it's set for, um, for the market to be 50% higher. So 150 mm -hmm. or 50 percent lower um, over the next 365 days. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Now, if you do the math, I, for, I forget, but it's something like you take the um, you take the uh, daily range and you multiply by 16 or 18. I don't remember. I used to do it for. Um, e mini forecaster when we used to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can convert just daily ranges into an annualized number by working the formula backwards. You could you could mm -hmm. Google it. I don't remember it. I, uh, I do uh, I do probably remember it, but I, I don't want to give you misinformation. Mm -hmm. You know, Google something like um, convert average daily range to you know volatility or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you can take the uh, and so what you do is you take the price of the index and you'd multiply it by a certain number and it would give you uh, the the VIX number plus mm -hmm. minus, you know mm -hmm. now that expands and contracts in any market and let mm -hmm. me tell you how that works when the market typically when the market starts going down. Uh, the volatility will increase because most players in the market are long players in the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. And so, as the market um, as the market uh, goes down, those long players become fearful. Mm -hmm. They start selling out of fear, which increases the ranges. Mm -hmm. The ranges get big, volatility goes up. That's what volatility is. It's increased ranges. With increased ranges, you expect more increased ranges, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm going to give you a little secret. You can actually predict the movement in the S&P off of uh, range expansions alone. If the market's been going up and the ranges are expanding, it's probably coming down. Mm -hmm. And if the market's been going down and the ranges are contracting, it's probably going up. You know, then you fit that into the three and five, you know, three, two, three, five thing I told you about. Mm -hmm. You can kind of predict the stock index is less, uh, less uh, reports and stuff like that off of that kind of information. Of course, it's a it's a bit of an art, and I've gotten pretty good at it. But, um, but anyways, uh, so that's what the VIX is. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give you a really cool way of using a volatility reading to um, to get an edge in the market. Let's say that I know that so what do we say median range in the ES is 30.5. Let's just call it 30. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's say that I know that 85% of the time I'm hitting 30 handles range in the ES. Mm -hmm. And during the period that I made that study, during the period that I made that study, the volatility was 25. Mm -hmm. With me so far? Mm -hmm. okay. 30 handles a day range. Volatility is 25. I'm just throwing a number out there. And today, I look at the volatility, and it says 35. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that I'm probably going to have a bigger range than 30? If you were measuring the median before, then probably yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, so you can actually... 
look at implied volatilities from the options. Hmm. You look at the implied volatilities from the options, and it'll give you a clue whether or not your stats are expanding or contracting. Ooh. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, cool thing to know. Mm -hmm. Cool thing to know. So, so if I were using volatility, I might, you know, use it in that way. Trading volatility, uh, be careful. That's it's a mover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Huge it, volume. Yeah, and it trends too, right? Oh, yeah, it does, man. Mm -hmm. It does. But, you know, it's it's bound within that, you know, volatility is not going to change that much. So, you know, it might move from 30 to 38% or something like that, and it might be a huge move on your chart. Mm -hmm. So it's because it's bounded. It's a, it's a percentage. Right. It can only go from 0 to 100, mm -hmm. you know. And so... Um, I had done some research on doing some volatility-related uh, things. Um, there are some patterns in volatility um, ETFs that are highly predictable. Mm -hmm. But when you go over to the futures, that edge disappears because the, mm -hmm. the smart guys uh, uh, factor it out mm -hmm. uh, by probably by arbing uh, uh, VIX ETFs and the futures. That's why those two markets, when you look at them, they, it, it's like they bear. It's almost like they bear no resemblance to one another. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of trippy. Uh, it's like if you look um, at the if you look at the spiders versus the ES futures, they're identical. Intraday. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they're they're almost identical. Right, but uh, when you plot like a daily graph, they look very different. Oh, do they really? Oh yeah, like you start, you know. You start drawing trend lines and Fibonacci, they're all... Oh, you find, yeah, those things are going to end up in little different places and stuff yeah. like that. But, I mean, the S&P is the S&P, and, mm -hmm. and so those things are going to follow cash within some reasonable margin. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what's going on with the VIX and the, and the VIX futures. It's an interesting consideration, but I haven't taken the time to study it, so I don't really know. Yeah, I'm not even sure. I don't think they're CME products. I don't know who trades uh, fixed futures. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, I pulled the look. symbol up a few times, mm -hmm. uh, doing a little bit of research on it um, that you know I didn't follow through on. Mm. There's fertile territory there, though. I think, yeah, if, you, if you're looking. Um, let's uh, touch last subject for today, and that is, um, I'm trying to word it correctly. How would you analyze? the noise in the market to have a, a better stop? Um, okay, let me tell you um, a couple of different ways that you could look at that. I like to base my stop, at least in principle, on what is a random movement. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by random movement? Well, if I have an entry that's going to happen at a certain point on the chart, and I know that random movement is 15 ticks, let's say. Random move, I'm talking intraday at this point. Mm -hmm. okay. Random movement is 15 ticks. What does that mean? It means that you can't predict. You probably can't predict without other factors coming into play. And without you being real slick on what kind of an edge you're getting in your trading. Mm -hmm. But if you're just trading in the market and you're not really knowledgeable, um, 15 ticks is probably uh, random in crude oil, and 15 ticks is probably random in, uh, in the ES, too, some, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. okay. So, theoretically, without any other edge, your stop needs to be at least 15 ticks if you can't get your trade placement tight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I might have talked about in our last interview, I don't know, but um, if you, uh, and that's why I said, you know, a guy's, uh, well, I'm going to do it on six ticks. Screw them. Screw random. <laughs> I'm, I'm not subject to random. Uh, yeah, you are. Um, unless you really know what you're doing. 
then you're not subject to random. You have to have, be an expert and have really good trade placement. So, um, so uh, just um, you know, what's my stop going to be? Fifteen, seventeen. Give it a little margin. Twenty, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so, but most people are going to say, "Ah, oh, I'm not willing to do that." Mm. You know, I'm not. I'm not risking two hundred dollars to get mm. caught in a eighty-five tick trade. Mm. What? <laughs> it's better than four to one. Are you kidding? Mm. Um, no, I'm going to trade on four tick stops. Well, guess what? You're going to get taken out. Mm. It's noisy. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it went hundred. Or at mm. the end of the day, we just did that with the ES, right? The, at the end of the day, it went twenty-four. You got stopped out fourteen times. Remember that example, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. So, what's random? Mm, 12 to 15 in the ES. Well, that's right now, though. Yeah, right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just kind of taking a stab at that. Would you do some kind of like a zigzag uh, analysis? Well, what I'll do, uh, let me give an example. Uh... Okay, what do I have here? I have, this is for crude oil, but it's probably not fundamentally different for um, for the ES, mm -hmm. in, in, by any huge degree. But, you know, I'll just show you this. Okay, so, um, what does this show me? This shows me uninterrupted bars. These are five tick bars. So I've broken the market down into five tick chunks. Five, 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 five. Either way, right? five tick chunks, uninterrupted, which means that I don't go two bars going the other way, mm -hmm. two five tick bars going the other way. Okay, and so the the question is, um, what is the probability of continuation past any given point? Okay, and so. To go one bar uh, past 20 is about 68% on the upside. Mm -hmm. That's an edge. Mm -hmm. That's an edge. Hey. Th this is over how many days? Um, 50. Mm -hmm. Now, if I pull that spreadsheet, hold on a second. If I pull that spreadsheet, um, the number of bars that were um, the number of bars that went 15 in reverse that did not continue mm -hmm. were um, these are reversal bars of the 10 tick bar so it goes 10 ticks what's the probability um, but you know, we're asking to define risk. So I said risk is about 15 ticks. Um, a little over a thousand of those bars went uh, went fifth. A little over a thousand went uh, 15. Um, and so, roughly 50 percent of all such occurrences failed. Roughly fifty percent. Mm -hmm. Well, what do what's random? What's random? Fifty percent. Fifty, right? Fifty. Mm -hmm. Fifty. That's your marker. So, um, what's the probability uh, beyond that? Well, you know, you start getting up in here. Sixty-six, sixty-seven, sixty-five, sixty-seven, right in here. This is. Um, this is 10 ticks past the reversal right here. I don't have the 5 on here. It probably would have been nice if I'd put the 5 on there. But So, what's it tell you? Well, it tells you if you only went 15, 10, if you only went a little less than 15, the probability of continuation is near to random. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, but then look what happens when it gets to uh, 10 ticks. Or you know, or twenty. Mm -hmm. um, 
suddenly you're at 68%. Okay? And then it drops off. Mm -hmm. Pretty darn fast, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, by the time you get to 40 ticks passed, it's almost 90% it's going the other way, right? Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that where we said, <laughs> you know, these guys are going to get long right there? Right. <laughs> you know, oh, man, it's gone up, uh, you know, as, you know. <laughs> It's it's right here. Let's buy. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm sitting here looking at my table, which I don't really look at. You know, you just I let me tell you what I do with information like this, because you know some guys go, you know, don't turn that into a religion. You just go, oh, 20 ticks past the reversal, is, or you know, 20 ticks. Um, you know, it's like you know, it's just under 70. Is that an edge? Yeah. Yeah, if I if I if I'm smart about where I'm going, I could probably make that much higher. Like if I you know if I combine that with like a the type two divergent pattern, you know, oh suddenly you're batting eighty. Mm -hmm. You know, oh what if uh, what if traders are trapped? Oh well suddenly you're you know now you're eighty five. Mm -hmm. To continue one more bar. Mm -hmm. To continue one more bar. And so you've got an edge there, and then you know you can find. Find your management there. If you can get in inside of that by any degree, um, then your probabilities escalate like dramatically. I mean dramatically, off the charts dramatically. This is how you get a guy um, who gets the smart pattern system and comes in the oil trading room and, um, and makes a million dollars in six months. Mm-hmm. Because what he did was he found the edge in inside of this. He's getting in way before these events are happening. Mm -hmm. He's getting in way before these events are happening. So what's random? About 15. Uh, without other skills or tools to help you, you're probably th there. Mm -hmm. And you need a tick or two past it because you've got bid-ask spreads. Mm -hmm. So that's 17. Mm -hmm. Plus yeah. bad entry. Yeah. Oh, bad entry. You got to add it. Mm -hmm. So, so a lot of this stuff comes down to getting um, the really good traders in in the big picture. Um, not only do they have a system that works, but they learn how to front run it. Mm -hmm. What I mean, right. front. I mean, get in early. Yeah, get in before the. You you actually getting in a little bit before, even if it's a tick. I, I know a guy here in San Diego. Been out for margaritas with him a couple times. Really interesting guy. The guy trading uh, S and P's in the uh, 350 lot chunks. Wow. Okay. He's very private and secretive about uh, about how he does his trading. Makes about 20 grand a day. I know this from the broker, not from. I mean, he didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. I know this from the broker. Um, which the broker really shouldn't have told me, but. But uh, he did. So when I probe him in just a conversation over margaritas for, you know, what's his, you know, what's he doing? And I'm sharing with him what I'm doing. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like an open forum, a couple of traders just kind of sharing the moment. Um, when I tallied it all down, when I tallied it all down, um, he's playing for about a tick a trade. Yeah. Playing for about a tick of trade when it all ends up, you know, and he gets caught in these big trades the whole day, hmm. you know, but he's, and those big trades are important. You know, I think we talked about that in prior interviews. You want to get caught. You've got to get caught in big trades. Mm -hmm. You can't cap it. If you cap it, uh, you're probably a net losing trader. Hmm. You got to let something run. You got to get caught in hundred tick trades, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't do it without, I mean, if you just go in and uh, and scalp out, um, and scalp out. Um, you might have a, a system that works just fine there, but you're not going to make a ton of money. You might make consistent small money. Yeah, it's rare that you write a system with uh, targets and that they yeah. help. They almost yeah. never help. Yeah, pretty much never. If you're yeah, if you're uh, you know running optimizations and stuff, you I've I've never really seen a target help a system. Uh, whether that be like a hangman kind of a stop or or a target, mm -hmm. I've never seen it help. 
Yeah. Um, I've seen, you know, things like trailing stops can help. You know? uh, could. Uh, hard, sometimes, yeah, so hard stops sometimes hurt, but like trailing stops can benefit you sometimes. Yeah, I trail intraday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just get to the point. But see, looking at this table, where are you trailing? Are you trailing in here? Mm. No, don't trail in there. Right. Uh, could you trail a little bit there? Yeah, it's forty. It's less than random, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's way less. It's seventy percent against. Ah, oh, it's eighty percent against. Ah, oh, it's ninety percent against. Oh man, it's like you know ninety-three mm -hmm. percent against. Should I be trailing? Uh, I think so. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's against you right now. You know, but yet you have to get caught in those trades. You have to let it happen. Well, it would be very uh, nice if you, Rob, could do the same uh, study for the uh, ES for next uh, video. Oh, for shoot, yeah, I could, just, I could just dump the data in there. Uh, before we yeah. meet, just uh, if you remind me, I'll I'll drop the data into the spreadsheet and, and we'll have a nice table. Okay. Yeah. I'll yeah, make a note of that. I had actually done it already, but I found an error. I just ran this. Uh, I ran this on, I think, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I, I usually when I... When I work, any kind of uh, research work, I was having some um, a couple of little issues with the spreadsheet with rounding errors or something was going on. I, uh. So I'm contacting the vendor on the tool to find out what's going on. But um, but anyways, I um, I found an error in the sheet. So I had actually made this uh, this. Uh, um, screenshot for in addition to crude oil I'd made it for the uh, e-mini S&P and I'd also made it for the Russell mm. um, but uh, but then because of the error the correction of the error I I deleted those oh okay yeah so just ask me next week I'll have yeah sure so. great well thank you again uh, Rob for uh, insightful interview and uh, uh, please, guys, if you have a uh, question, just uh, post it in the comments below this video uh, or email directly to Rob, and uh, we will talk to you next week. Thank you, Rob. Okay, thank you, Vadim. Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this series. It's really cool. Yeah, I'm, this yeah. is fun. This is great. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.